Good day, my friends. Walter here. Today's video is a little bit different. It's called What's in the Box, Ox? So I guess I'll begin today's video with talking about this box. And then we're going to root through it and see what we can find in there. Okay, I'll start out by explaining about my box. This box came from the railroad years ago. It's made out of metal. I don't have the dimensions, but I'd say it's two and a half feet by a little bit less than two feet by probably 18, 20 inches high. Got a lid on it. And I'll explain what, what it is and where I got it. Years ago, I worked on the repair track at Inman Yards in Atlanta. And at that time, they had one of these blocks on. We had four active repair tracks. And three of those tracks had a toolbox like this on it. It was kept locked till you needed something. You unlocked it and went in there and found the tools that were assigned to that track. At that time, they kept tools one set of tools in each box. Later on, they just issued tools practically to everybody. But at that time, you had to work with the tools that were in here. They issued you a pair of channel locks and a crescent wrench, a hammer and a punch, and a key buster for breaking Carter keys. Key buster, I'll explain what that is one of these days. In fact, we'll make one. Key Buster basically just bends Carter keys. Okay, some couple of years after start beginning to work out there, they decided to remodel the repair track, and these things wound up in the trash. Well, Walter wasn't going to leave nothing as handy as that little toolbox in the trash. We brought that home. I only wish I'd have got all three of them. We'll begin by going through the box and just remember now there's no good tools in here. Actually, I'm not sure what's in there because I've just been throwing junk in and out of there. When I built this house, I kept my power saws and the other things in there. But I really don't know what all we're going to find in here today. It'll be an assortment of junk, you can bet on that. Uh, this box is going to be an upcoming project. And I'll work on it some during the year. It needs a hasp. This one's been broke off or cut off or something. So we've got to find a hasp for it. Let's begin by looking at the box and see what we can find. My purpose in today is to take the stuff out of the box is twofold to make a video for YouTube. And let's just see what's in there. But it's also, let's begin right here. What this bag has in it is some rollers. Bought them at the Home Depot recently. We want to put rollers on this toolbox. This booger is way too heavy to move around the garage. So let's see, we can't put some wheels on that thing and maybe add a, a handle to pull it with. That's going to be an upcoming project. We're going to put wheels on this box. Maybe sand it, prime it, fix it up nice. That looks like junk, and it is. It's a plastic six-pack of Powerade. But I think I probably can cut the top out of it and use it for a little container in an upcoming project. Plastic putty knife. Everybody needs one or two of them. Here's some more putty knives. I guess I need to put this on something so I don't have to pick it up twice. Let's... All right, rather than handle things twice, I got a box out here to put my junk in. We'll sort it to various containers when we get done. I've got a trash box and a cardboard box to put our stuff in. And since there's so much stuff in here, we're not going to cover a whole lot 
a detail on each item. Pretty nice. Look at guard person. A circular saw guide, I mean. We'll put we'll put that aside and put it with a saw if it'll fit on there. Here we, here's a good way to start. How many of you know what this item is? Looks like a big giant thing for picking up something. Well I'm gonna tell you what it is. In fact, I could demonstrate it. Let's demonstrate it. Turn the camera around. This thing is used in this manner to grab and pick up one end of a railroad cross tie. Uh, something similar to this. Here's a piece of rail this for picking up cross ties. You hook it on your cross tie, you can pick it up drag it around wherever you want. I think it's reversible. You can reverse it that way to handle smaller items like that grill. I had two of these and some thief stole one of them. At one time I had a he pile of scrap iron material out in the backyard and in the process of cleaning up a guy came around wanting scrap iron and I gave him it all to haul it away. Well, he came back when I wasn't here, went through my barn and stole a bunch of stuff. I caught him up there when he came back the third time. He was coming back for more. I said, where's my Jackson stuff that you had in there? Oh, what's his name? Got him. So you wouldn't give him permission to take them. Bring him back. Knew he never would. I ran him off the property. Should have prosecuted him. I hate a thief. Especially when he's stealing from me. Alright, what else is in here? Let's put our cross tie toter in here. We put that cross tie toter to good use one day out there when we were putting some cross ties around my mulch pile. A sheetrock hammer. I used it when I was hanging sheetrock. You can pull nails with this and drive the sheetrock nails with that. It's designed with a, a bevel to countersink the nail into the sheetrock. Use one of these to smooth the putty over it, to cover it up the nail. So some of these tools I'm gonna keep out since they belong in a toolbox. A broken rod and reel. Whoops! Wrong container. That's trash. A sponge. We always can use a sponge. Spark plugs. Let's get to the small items later. Now you want to see a carter key? That is a carter pin. A jumbo carter pin. Beat up old no name crescent wrench. It says diamond. Pretty bad shape. It's a 12-inch diamond, no hammering, no extensions. I'd say it's a cheap old crescent wrench. That needs a little maintenance. Well, what are we going to do here? Check out this old wrench. I don't know what size it is, but it, it's a humdinger, whatever it is. Kind of a spanner and she has special design on it. Here's a pneumatic sander. I think I bought this on eBay. Got it home and it uses so much air that it depletes your air compressor in a hurry. 
Maybe I can adjust this knob on here and get it to work a little better. Uh, you stick the sandpaper on there one way or another. Maybe I just never figured out how to work it. It's got a counterbalance on it. I never noticed that before. Oh, probably because it's blocks orbital. Sounds like as good a term as any. A beat up old caulking gun. I bet I got a dozen of these around the house. Oh, ain't that cute? A bent hole. I used it for some kind of tool at one time or another. Took a hoe and bent it and used it for some special purpose. We could straighten that up and put a handle in it and hoe some more. A saw. A buffing pad. Little bit in a drill or something. Here's a Jim Dandy little saw. It says Handy Andy. That's a Handy Andy saw. Must be something like a child would use, but I wouldn't bet on that. Not many people would issue, would give a, a kid tools nowadays. Liable to hurt himself. When I was a kid, they handed me a big old axe and told me to go chop wood. I wonder I didn't cut off my foot. Here's a vibrator sander. Wires are kind of frayed. I don't even remember if it works. Who was it made by? Straight line sander model F5. I think this is an old Sears and Roebuck product. A oh, holster for combination pliers. Look at this thing in we're going to see about doing my, uh, my rollers. A nice little towel rack. Maybe we can hang that in the garage and do something with it. A claw hammer. Speaking of hammers, I recently did a video uh, putting a handle in one of my hammers. I wanted to bring a note to people's attention. I watched a couple videos on YouTube where a guy took a ball peen hammer. Some people don't know how to spell peen. Some people put P E I in. P-E-A-N, but correct spell is P-E-N. Now a ball peen hammer, the head on it is rounded. It's not designed for hammering nails. A claw hammer is designed with a flat surface, especially for driving nails. Anyway, this guy on YouTube was remodeling his, or reconditioning his old ball peen hammer. He actually took a angle grinder and trimmed off the end to make it perfectly flat. Well, if he knew anything about a ball peen hammer, he wouldn't have done that. Ball peen hammers are designed for like driving rivets, uh, bending metal, and it has a purpose for that curved surface. If you want to hammer some nails, get you a claw hammer. If you ever try to drive a nail with a ball peen hammer, it'll bend your nail. Anyway, I thought that was ridiculous. To, he made his hammer look really pretty. He had like two million views on it. Well, how many people didn't know you're not supposed to do that? He got like two million views on how to restore a hammer and he had no idea what he was talking about. That looked like it could, some, could inflict some serious damage on somebody. Let me trim your mustache. 
Oh yes sir, we'll do that. Trim that booger right up. Ten snips. Cheap old brand, nothing fancy. A lid off a mason jar, trash. Empty tape roll, trash. A soapstone holder with no soapstone in it. Maybe we get lucky and find a piece of soapstone before we get done. Spark plugs are auto light. That means they came out of my forward probably. No wonder I can't ever find your wrenches. They're all over the house. This is a, a Japanese made alloy wrench from the Fuller Company. I need to put that in my other toolboxes. Here's something I promised to Ron. Never got around to sending it to him, but I hadn't forgot you, Ron. A Georgia tag. This is from 2012. I got an older one in there somewhere. Trench. Need the chalk line. Pull that out and mark your lines to draw with. Keyhole saw from straight from Ace Hardware. What do you suppose that was for? Whatever it is, it's a humdinger. I don't think I'll even keep that hammer. That's still cheapo, cheapo. Maybe I can use the metal for something. Another towel rack. I guess I've been some time in the past, got all the goodies out of here. Here's a neat little item I've never used. 12 volt light, halogen lamp. I thought about making a bracket and rigging that booger bear up on my rod and lawnmower and see if it'll power it. We could move a lawn at night. How about that? Let's go put that up right now before it gets broke. <clears throat> Little metal tray. I think I used it for edging paint with. You can always find a use for a piece of metal. Staple gun holster. It even got my name on it. It's been a while since my waist was that size. Sure I can't trim up that mustache for you? That is a bracket off a riding lawnmower. I don't remember what part, but it's definitely off a riding lawnmower. Another sanding doohickey. We better save that. Oh, look at here. Brand new, never used saw blade. Well, that's probably out of my uh, says nine inch combination. That's out of my power miter saw. It's shoved in that garage somewhere or another. Soapstone holder. I've been looking for the one of them. Let's put that over here on our project table. Here's another soapstone holder with soapstone in it. 
Got this little round soapstone with no soapstone in it. Yeah, let's put those where we can find them. Here's a handy little item. Put that on a paint bucket. To wipe your paint brush off with, I think. I believe that's what it's for. A rubber mallet. Needs a little attention. The handle's all nasty. And another hammer. El cheapo. A staple puller. I can trim your mustache with that. One hair at a time. Right, a piece of sandpaper. Box of nails. Two more saw blades. Seven and a quarter inch fast combination, bracken digger, never used. This one here, well used. War plum out. Trash. A genuine staple gun. I don't know if it broke or what. That spring looks like it ought to be attached to something or other. Another saw blade. Trash. Looking Safety Shoe Company. That's where I bought a pair of safety boots. When did I buy them? 1223. Looks like 92. Paid $109.80 for a pair of size 12E boots. They're on Hammer Mill Road in Atlanta. I used to go there and buy my shoes di directly because I'm a fanatic about shoes that fit. Some people just order what they think their size is and hope it fits when they get there. But I've always had to try my shoes on. If they don't fit right, I can't wear them. Nice little snap ring. That ought to be handy for something. Another wrench. Well, we're about run out of stuff to dig out of here. A handle off of a pudding knife. Pencil. Please try on your new shoes on a clean carpeted surface. I don't think so. I'm sure I wore them out a long time ago. C clamp. Needs a little clean up, but that'll work. Looks like everything in here is just trash now. Battery operated screwdriver. It was a Craftsman cordless screwdriver. Don't even know where the charger is. It's trash. It goes on my weed trimmer. That's a uh, Oh my goodness, we found a round piece of soapstone. Let's see if that will fit in the soapstone holder. Oh, 
I was in there, but there ain't no keeper. Maybe I just forgot how to install it. I don't know the trick to make it stay in there anymore. I don't forgot. Maybe a piece of it's missing. All right, let's put our soapstone and our C-clamp up. We can always use more pencils. A little dinky pair of pliers. Let me get that booger out of your nose. That'll work real good for plucking them hair, them eyebrows. Hold still, Joe. You got a, you got a hairy eyebrow. Plunk. Walter's a sadist. What do we got here? Hacksaw blades. Got a whole bunch of them somewhere. Trash. Some kind of little wrench. Okay, we're down to the point of cleaning out the box and see it, flip it over. See what we can do about getting some wheels on this booger bear. It wasn't much to see in my junk box today, but I hope you watched my video and any input you care to add on my box would be greatly appreciated. We'll finish this video up by looking at the bottom of the box. I got most of the dirt and trash and loose items out of the toolbox. See what the bottom looks like for putting my rollers on before I quit for today. Gotta find a hasp. All right, we'll have to use the angle grinder or something. Cut that weld on there. Grind it down. Hopefully we can get it cut off without cutting all the way through the bottom. We'll put us a plate or something on there, each corner to hold my roller. Sure don't need that angle iron on there anymore. I think that angle that that angle iron was originally in the cement, and all they did was tack weld it down. Probably have to fix my box where the weld burned all the way through the box. But we'll come up with something. I want to sand it down and paint it. That looked good painted red. Anyway. More junk out of Walter's garage, another project to think about.